Yo, 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 Thought Warriors. What is up? Higher Learning is on. It's Ivan Lathan Jr. And it's me, Rachel and Lindsay. Rachel. <laughs> what? How are you feeling? A headache. Me too. I don't know what, I have a headache. You no, know, I thought I had a brain tumor. I looked up the symptoms. I had a headache. Just from a headache? Well, the headache lasted for like a couple of days. Was it a migraine? Maybe. Did and you look up those symptoms before you jumped to brain tumor? Well, you and Kalika have to figure something out. Why the attack? You it, it, it must it, be really rough for you because you, you get it at home and you get it like, at work. It, 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 <laughs> why? I, that's the only thing I was. Why the attack? It's not an attack. I'm Donnie, just, was that not an attack? Like I said, I was concerned and I looked up brain tumor. Why isn't there a, a scintilla of concern? You know what it is? The, the concern, maybe the delivery is wrong, but the concern is you're jumping to the extreme and I'm trying to save you some anxiety. There are steps to it. Why isn't the first thought migraine? Why don't you check those symptoms before jumping into something that is life-threatening? That's why I'm like, I'm trying to like bring in or like tone down your anxiety. Okay. But it's not, if you check for the brain tumor and no brain tumor, then everything else is, you know. Did you go get a CT scan? Got one coming up. I'm going to up Wednesday. Have you been drinking a lot of water? Not as much as I should. Okay, that could be contributing to your headaches. You might be dehydrated. Point. Yeah. I, like, there's Here's so the many thing, things. Though. If you get the scan and there's no brain tumor, now we know what we need to work on. Are you going to get that full body scan that tells you everything that could possibly be wrong with you? Yep. What is it called? Pre Brian did it. Did he? And it said, the scan said, ooh, you sexy, nigga. No, I just, I think for me, that would give, that's, I don't understand that somebody with anxiety, why you would do that. Because it's going to tell you every little thing. It's the same thing with like Alzheimer's runs in my family and people get tested for that gene. I don't want to know. I don't want that cloud over me. Maybe I'll get it because it doesn't mean you'll get it, but it means you could. I mean, the reality so I is. I just don't want to, I just would, wouldn't want to function that you way. You might as well go get it because you're going to forget anyway. You know, those jokes never really land the way that you want them to. It's for, like low-hanging fruit. For me, they do. Because... I, anybody else it's, chuckle? It's, it's, it's my only defense response to having very real concerns about me weaponized oh, in wow. a very insensitive way. You are so good at the victim mentality. Oh my God. I got that, I, I had that down by like 92. <laughs> it are shows. Kid, are you fucking it kidding shows. me? I had that down by like 92. It definitely I, I, shows. I, I'm good because I can vacillate from aggressor to why me in literally 15 seconds. And you, somebody you wouldn't even know that it was happening. You and white people. No, but white people do it differently, <laughs> though. See, white people... Oh, how are they different from, from you? See, white people aggress, right? And then on that same aggression, ask why me. See, I don't do that. That's too, that's too white. That's too European. See, I wouldn't come in here and take all of your water and then say, why do you blame me for being thirsty? I would never do that. I think you've done some things like that. Give me an example. I, I don't have it in front of me. Then give me time. Keep it on the playground. Give, like give Monique says, time. if you can't give me an example, I never do some shit and then blame you. Well, Kalika might say differently. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, but, but, but I, don't, I don't do it in that way. The way that I do it is, see what just happened earlier when you attacked me for no reason at the beginning of the podcast? I managed to use that and then at the end, take my power back. It was, come on, man. You got to You took honest. your power back by making fun of a disease that has debil been debilitating to the women on my side of the family. You, on my, every, in my family. Do you know what's been debilitating the people in my family? Anxiety. Okay? It runs in the family. Right now, somewhere, my mom is listening to this. And she's going, does my baby have a brain tumor? Oh, my God. Did I ever tell you the story of how my mom reacted when we went to the community center and my sister had sickle cell trait. 
<laughs> Wait, she went, she got tested, and she had it. She didn't have sickle cell, she just Wait. has the trait. So, I don't know if they're still doing this, but as a part of young Negro youth, did you have this? No, we talked about this in the podcast. I don't ever recall doing this. Okay, I'll, I'll say it one more time. I don't know, we talked about it. See? Forgetting stuff, maybe I need to. Uh, so we go and we get the whole thing with the sickle cell trait, right? You have to go in there, and they test your blood. Do you have sickle cell? Do you have sickle cell trait? Because if you have sickle cell trait, you might develop it, your kids might have it, or something like that. So we go there, then no sickle cell, I don't think. Dad didn't get tested or whatever. Ebony had sickle cell trait. We're driving home, and mom is silent. Like, she is silent. And dad, and dad stops at a red light, and he goes, son, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. I just see your mama. <laughs> your mama right now has sickle cell. <laughs> she was like, she has sickle cell. Ebony has sickle cell. I have sickle cell. We all have sickle cell. There's no difference in what happened when the people told us we didn't have it and your mama believing that everybody in the car has sickle cell right now. And for the next week, we all going to have sickle cell. It's going to be a sickle cell house. We're going to be drinking sickle cell herbs and watching sickle cell TV and doing sickle cell activities until your mama gets it out of her system that we don't have sickle cell. He was so frustrated <laughs> because living with someone with anxiety in that way can be debilitating to the person sure. that they are they with. Live. Yes, yes. And it's the same thing. When we when you have anxiety, you always it's you want to <laughs> make it I'm so scared, but like the people that are around you that are trying to tell you, that are trying to tell you that it's okay, it's so tough for them. And he didn't really know how to deal with it yeah. other than to kind of be a dickhead about it in front of the whole car. But it was I laughed and I got in trouble. Because <laughs> as he was saying it, he was so upset. He was so frustrated. Because he knew what was coming. Because he knew that it was going to be, <laughs> and he was right, six cell books. Telephone. For a second there, it was it was a sickle cell centric house. <laughs> But you know what? You recognize it, though. Oh you recognize God. it in your mom, but then you realize you're doing it as well. I can't stop. And you can't stop yourself. No. I mean, the fact that you ordered a CT scan is wild to me. Also, you must have great insurance because I would not be thinking, let me just go. Let me, because those are, that is expensive. And so is the full body. Call the doctor. Y'all understand. I've had full battery of tests. Neurological exams. At one point, I thought I had uh, Parkinson's disease. And so I... I'm exhausted. <laughs> right. What? So I had... So after I saw... What was the, what was the name of the movie where old boy was playing uh, Stephen Hawking? You know... Don't look at me. What's the name of the movie? The Theory of Everything? Was that the joint? So after I saw that, I was like... I just would look at my shit and try to work my shit. And just, you know, make sure my shit was working. That's got to be exhausting. Like, I just can't imagine. Like, I actually do feel bad for you because I can't imagine constantly living in a state of worry like that. Like, I worry, but not over stuff like that. I'm actually probably the worst. I actually could do better. I could use a little bit of you. I'd never go to the doctor. You don't care. I think my anxiety shows up in different ways. I'm the opposite from you. I get scared of what could happen rather than just ruling it out. Mm -hmm. Like, it's scary to me. I'm like, oh, no, I'll be fine. Like, I'll just, you know, like, drink some water, go to sleep, rather than acting on it. So it's it's the opposite for me. So I have anxiety, too, but in a different way. Rather than, yeah, I just don't go. So understand that when you realize that someone is dealing with a hereditary affliction, such as anxiety, you know, being a hypochondriac, one time my mother... I don't want to tell too much, but, <laughs> but this is this is how we are. And you know what? It causes her to be one of the most in tune people to what you might be going through. She's just like an empath. And she's like, 
like literally the most precious person in the world because she is so concerned with what might and could be happening to you. And that's, and that's part of the love thing. So for me, somebody tells me, I can't sleep. I go, what do you feel like when you wake up? Do you feel lightheaded, dizzy? These are the things that it could be. Let's go get checked out. How, what amount of time do you spend Googling symptoms? You know, it's been better lately. Okay. But it used to be a lot. I Googled the, I Googled the symptoms. And you shouldn't do that, right? Because everything is everything. I Google symptoms, though. Of course you do. But then you don't do shit about it. See, you, you nigga, you lazy. Because I'm, no, because I'm scared. No, mm -hmm. truly. I'm telling you, as I'm talking this out, I'm like, I have anxiety, but on the opposite end. Um, anyways, I was in Houston this weekend. That's what I was asking you about. Um, I was in Houston. We celebrated my grandmother's life. Mm. And, you know, it's like, it's, it's so weird because, you know, like, funerals are a weird thing because you, you're obviously super sad at the start of it. And there's the processional mm -hmm. and you view the body and it's very sad. And then there's always a song that just like breaks you down. And then people come to the microphone and they talk and they start telling stories. Mm -hmm. And there's just like this moment of levity where like you're, you're, you're talking about, thank goodness no one broke down when they were talking, but of like sharing memories and telling stories and like you're remembering that person in a completely different way and it's like this moment of peace mm -hmm. and then they play going up yonder and it hits you all over again mm -hmm. and then you go outside and then you're seeing everybody who came and then there's this other light moment but then like in the back of your mind you're like but we're here for this reason and this person's not here but then I'm so excited. I'm so happy to see family that I haven't. It's just it's just like a roller coaster of emotions. And then at times I feel guilty for being so, you know, happy to see family because the reason we're here is because she's not here. It's just a, it's just a lot. But it was a beautiful um, uh, celebration of life. And she went out in a beautiful way. And yes. So now it's as some as somebody said to me. It's just accepting the new normal. Yeah. It's tough. Yes. I don't remember my father's funeral. I, I remember, like, but I was glazed over. Oh, I'm sure. I don't remember it. Like, I, I don't, <clears throat> there's like a whole gap in my memory from around that time. Like, I don't, for someone who has a pretty formidable memory, I don't remember the feeling, I don't remember very much. It was just kind of mm. like. <sighs> Maybe that was a way to protect yourself. I don't know. But it, it, what you're saying is true because what ends up happening is you start to put into context just how much joy this person brought to everybody. Yeah. You know? And it's like, Oh man, what a great life. Now, sometimes at funerals, it's more difficult. I go live growing up in Baton Rouge, you know, sometimes people would uh would check out at different times and maybe they're 24, 25, and it was violin. And sure. then the funerals about what they loved to do mm -hmm. and uh what this means and how we need to be to be strong together. But for a woman who 86. 86 years old that meant so much to everybody. Everyone is probably like thinking about just how strong this presence was and what yeah. it meant to everyone. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was, it was nice. And it would have been, she would have wanted family to be laughing and gathering and mm -hmm. connected. And the legacy of my grandparents is just like our that side of the family, I've never seen anything like it. And my uncle is actually in town. My uncle came in town today, at, or last night. And we went to dinner. We went to Steak 48. Shout out to Uncle Quincy. Q's. Um, it's a cute dog. Cute dog. And, Whole uh, family in different cults, huh? <laughs> he's a cute dog. And it was just nice to have dinner and just, like, we were just talking about it, everything and reminiscing and just talking about our family and the connection. And then, you know, it's just, it was just a lot of laughter. It was really good. To, it's just, you know, you, we don't have family here. So it's like good when family comes, it just feels different. So especially after this weekend, I was, I'm really happy that he's here.
I'm glad you you're feeling well. I looked at some of the pictures and you come from good Negro stock. <laughs> Let's get into the show. <laughs> On the other side of this, the big deal of the day, a verdict in the Jonathan Majors case. Okay, just so everybody knows, we are just getting this information. Like literally, we had a different big deal of the day picked for the podcast and Rachel was actually leaving I was on the street. I was out the garage on the street. Rachel, was, it was over. Um, and we came back in because as we were leaving, a verdict has come out in the Jonathan Majors case. We probably should have expected a verdict today. It's, it, we should have. Yeah. Because they got the case Friday. Yeah. And we should have known. Right. Mm -hmm. um, That's so. our fault. The verdict for Jonathan Majors is guilty of assault and harassment. He was acquitted on some of the other charges. So there were, I think, four charges yes, there that were. Jonathan Majors was facing. Two charges stemmed from what happened allegedly inside the car. And let's go back through what the case uh, is about. Apparently, uh, Grace Jabari, who uh, is the victim in this case, was riding in the car with Jonathan Majors when Jonathan Majors received a text and the text said, uh, how I wish to be kissing you right now. This is what Grace Jabari testified to. She saw that and she, uh, according to her testimony, grabbed his phone when she saw that, that, saw that text. And after grabbing his phone, she alleges that he uh, grabbed the phone back, pried her finger off of the phone, and then hit her um, about the head to get the phone away from her. That happened inside the car. Outside of the car, there was then another assault charge that stemmed from uh, what she believed, what she said was Jonathan Majors picking her up and forcefully putting her back inside of the car. All right, so to everything, two third degree, a third degree assault charge of him uh, picking her up, excuse me, a third degree assault charge of, her, of him hitting her inside the car, and harassing her inside the car. Both of those things he was found not guilty on. What he was found guilty on was the contact that happened outside the car when he pushed her, picked her up, and put her back inside of the car and the harassment that uh, is subsequent from that. Um, he's found guilty of one count of assault, one count of harassment, acquitted of two other counts of assault, so two other counts of assault he was acquitted from, and aggravated harassment in a split verdict. So this is a a, a, a split verdict. Um, pull your laptop to you a little bit. I should oh. say this was a split verdict. Uh, I'm reading right now from ABC News. ABC News has the latest on this. They say that the mixed verdict signals the jury believed Majors recklessly assaulted his ex girlfriend, but did not intentionally do so. Again, the mixed verdict also suggests that the jury did not believe Majors intentionally committed aggravated harassment inside of the SUV, but did believe he harassed her outside of the vehicle by picking her up off the ground and throwing her back inside. Majors did not appear to react as the verdict was read. He stood with his lawyers facing the jury as the four women announced the verdict on each of the four counts. Um... I am interested in what this means. Prosecutors claimed that Majors inflicted a manipulative pattern of psychological abuse and physical abuse on Jabari that culminated in the incident in the SUV that left her with a cut behind her ear and a broken finger. Prosecutor Michael Perez said uh, during opening statements that Majors grabbed and squeezed her hand, her middle finger specifically, and then struck a blow that swiped across the right side of her head. He was acquitted for all of that. Um, That's the thing. Yeah. If you're saying that there was no intention behind it, then how do you explain her injuries? Um, They're not. They're not. And, and they were asked to. The jury was asked to do that, and they believe that the evidence doesn't show that, as presented, that he intentionally did those things. Now they're saying he was reckless in it. So there's so there's there's saying that his reckless behavior could have attributed to some of those injuries. 
you know, a, an example, not saying this is what the jury's saying, but an example of like he squeezed her hand trying to push her back in, maybe didn't realize how how hard he squeezed it. Or maybe in pushing her back in, like another injury occurred. He was reckless in his behavior, but he did not, that his intention was not to hurt her. So this is the, the bottom line. Jonathan Majors is guilty of assault. And harassment. And harassment. But not in the way that he was being accused, ultimately. Well, and let's not forget, I'm accused, asking if that's, accused, if that's by the state, accused by the state of New York, not by her, she did not want to proceed with charges. So, like, that's important to um, note as well. But, yes, but I don't know if that, it's, if this was, think of, like, negligence, right? So, like, you didn't intentionally intend to, you know, hit someone with your car, but you were reckless in it. You're still, you're still. Uh, uh, I mean, no. I, I, well, your I'll, actions, they're still saying, the intent is not there, but they're still saying your actions were the result of these injuries. That is what the jury is saying for sure. Okay. The reason behind your actions is the difference. But they're saying the way you behaved caused her, resulted in an injury to her. That's what they're saying. Um, what does this mean for us? Who's us? Higher learning, black people? What no, are you saying? No, 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 not us. Not black people, not higher learning. Let's talk about what trials like this are oftentimes about. Grace Jabbar is a, is a victim here. She is now officially deemed by law a victim of assault. I, I keep repeating this over and over again, and I don't want it, to, I don't want it or mean it to sound selfish, but there are two different things that are on trial here. One is Jonathan Majors as a man, a partner, and a human being. The other is Jonathan Majors as a public entity that people can invest into, be a fan of, and support. Those are the two things that are on trial. Anytime there is a prominent person that is on trial, those are the two things that are on trial. Because the answers that you're looking for from someone, uh, from the law, should I say, are answers about their conduct, but also answers about how you go forth in supporting or not supporting them. Because that's what people are talking about. Sure. We are trying to set a standard where abusers, uh, rapists, uh, sexual harassers, coons, uh, political bad actors don't have the same platforms that they've had over the course of these past decades or centuries, really. Um, and that's kind of what a lot of this stuff is about. The question is, does this verdict give any answers to whether or not uh, it's okay to be in the business of Jonathan Majors? Because it, the way it reads, and this is, and hopefully Matt Bellany or Megan Cuniff or somebody, the way it reads, the verdict reads, is that this was a situation that got out of control and not a situation where he beat the shit out of her, right? Because punching her and breaking her finger and all of that stuff inside of the car, they say he didn't do that. Pushing her back into the car and then running away, which making contact with her is definitely assault and the harassment. I'm not minimizing any of it. I'm saying that the split verdict kind of doesn't answer any questions. Well, it never was going to. But not, for the court, not for the court of public opinion, because in the court of public opinion, people make up their minds before a verdict even happens. We saw that with Tori and Megan. I've copped to my own feelings about that. So whether he was found fully guilty on four, three out of the four, two, one, none, I don't think it would have given anybody the answers. I, I know, we've and we've discussed this on the podcast, you wanted it to give you answers. Or you were asking, what are you supposed to take from this? But that, again, and I think that was my original response to you, that's a personal decision. Because just because they're found not guilty doesn't necessarily mean they're innocent. <laughs> it doesn't. I know, but what? <laughs> and that's why I say it's personal. That's why I say, as human beings, when you do, when you, when you practice law, it's, they always say you're applying black and white letter law to the issue, right? But as humans, we don't do that. We function in the gray because our emotions get there. So it's hard to say 
that humans are going to react the same way that you would in, the, in a legal capacity. You don't because there's emotion and there's feelings and there's personal bias attached to a situation that you're not supposed to have. The law is supposed to be void of that. The jury is supposed to be void of that. So it's hard to say that a jury that is supposed to be void of any type of emotion and feelings that is applying the law as it's written to the evidence that's given to them is supposed to then make you decide as a human being who doesn't function that way and tell you what to do. I just don't think that you can reconcile those two. Does that make sense? It does. I mean, it It does. My confusion from this comes from, not my confusion, my questions from this come from the space of solidarity, right? Like what you're asked to do or what you're expected to do. You're expected to put your morals and your best intellectual foot forward in terms of how you view people who hurt people. Mm-hmm. Um, and the box you put them in, the uh, the way in which you regard them. That's what you're being. That's what you're being asked to do. Just say, hey, this is a fucked up nigga. Okay, well we don't let fucked up niggas in the party. Hey, this is a fucked up lady. Okay, well we don't let we don't let fucked up ladies in the party. This person is this way. This person is that way. Okay, well they don't, they can't come. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that we're around and exposing to pe- exposing people to the fewest amount of fucked up people that we can. The question is, how do we decide that somebody's fucked up? It's personal. But that it, that can't be the answer. I mean, it's, <laughs> because, you know what I'm saying? It's like that. that okay, but it's, it's... Because we're making cultural and societal determinations on people based upon how we support okay. them and things that we do in the conversation. So then don't question it. He was found guilty. His behavior... So if that's how you want to apply, because I don't think it's possible. I do think it's personal. But if you want to draw a line, a jury of six people found him guilty on two out of the four. They said that he's not bad as in he planned or intentionally was like, I'm going to hurt her in this way. But he used a level of force and was reckless in the way that he applied it that caught, resulted in some injury towards her. That is what a jury decided. So if you want to draw a line, his reckless behavior caused an injury. And he's guilty of that. So if you want to, and, and taking all emotion out of it, how would you just, what would you, what would you, how do you take that? Oh. Um, so somebody who's not doing something intentionally, right? But you were reckless in how you, and how you did that. So this is the entire way that I look at it. Um, and you guys hear the phone blowing up. Everybody's talking about this right now. So. Your every, phone's phone. <laughs> yeah, every, everyone is discussing this right now. Like everyone's talking about it. I look at this verdict as honestly giving Jonathan Majors the opportunity to address some things about himself. I think he has a chance. That there's there are issues. Yeah. Yeah, I think this verdict is not a. Uh, okay. um, uh, uh, I mean, for some people it will be, but you know. Don't you think we have to wait to the sentencing to see? I mean, maybe. But because he could, be, he could go to jail. So, I mean, if he goes to jail, then... Well, then I'm saying what's the message, right? Because a judge... I, I doubt that he goes to jail. Okay. He's facing up to a year. Right. I, 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 doubt, I doubt that he goes to jail. But I, I do think that if people that are interested in knowing what happened here, interested in understanding what happens here, and by the way, we need to kind of delve into these issues a little bit just here on the podcast, we need to have a more robust conversation about what all of this means. Like, it, what it means to be an abuser, what it means to be a victim, what it means to be all. We need to have a more robust conversation about this because it's clear that as a 43-year-old man that has been around people that have been a victim of all different types of violence, that I still don't have the first fucking clue of what it means, how serious the issue is, the toll that it takes, and all the different micro ways that the issue can affect people and uh and 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 change their lives. It's just it's just obvious that I have so much more learning and work to do. And I apologize to the audience. But it's it just you this just like I, I got too many questions to be as old as I am. It's just a fact. Um 
But in my opinion, there's a, 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 a version of this to where he got mad at her and he beat her up. And he's just like, hey, you try to grab my phone. Who do you think you are? Punch you in your shit. Break your finger. He beat her up. Obviously, there was some kind of physical shit that happened. But there are rational people that can look at this and go that it all happened under the framework of wrestling over a phone or trying to get away or trying to put her back in the car or whatever. And the whole nine and that it was an incident that got out of control and it doesn't necessarily paint him as an abuser is what I'm saying. A physical abuser or an, because that's, that's, it doesn't mean that, because you're using abuser in general. Abuser in general. That's true. So what I'm saying is to that, what we do know is that there's still been some video, excuse me, some, some, some audio that doesn't sound very good. And that, text messages. And text messages that don't sound very good, don't look very good, right? And if you ask me what this represents, I think that Jonathan Majors is probably going to be able to resume his career in some capacity. Like, it, it, I think that this is probably going to be a thing to where um, I think Kang and the Disney thing is going. I just don't think Disney's going to be able to, to to sell it to the House of Mouse that um, someone that has been found guilty of assault in any way is going to be able to make family movies or whatever, right? But I think that moving forward, he's going to have the opportunity because this isn't the harshest that it could have been to uh, to move on with his career and continue to 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 achieve as an actor. The question will be how much work that he does not in front of the screen, but how much work Jonathan does on himself. Oh, wow. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Sorry, <laughs> Did the camera guys. pick that up? <laughs> that, was the, that was the most fucking <laughs> relentless stomach growl. That was an inward fart. I'm not going to lie. Man. That was... <laughs> <laughs> like that was crazy. <laughs> that was an end with fun. I haven't eaten today. Yeah, I haven't either. But you don't hear my stomach over here. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah. So I think that uh, you know, between uh, uh, Jonathan, um, Grace Jabari, who he probably still owes something to in terms of whatever psychological scars that she has from from all of this, I think he probably is going to be afforded. The, the opportunity to move on in a way that he might have not been. And the question will be how he goes about it. The question will also be, we're taking the time to note that there were four counts that not just read a headline that he's found guilty, to realize that he was found guilty of two out of the four and lesser charges than two out of the, than the, than the other two. Also taking the time to note that intention, the intention is remo- as in that it wasn't intentional, that it was a reckless behavior, not excusing it, just saying that that's why they're lesser charges. We're taking the time to do that. The question is, when you're talking about the court of public opinion, will people take the time to do that? I'm not, I hope that in some capacity he's, or just, I hope period, not in some capacity, I hope that he's able to work again for, in his profession. But do I think that people are going to really take the time to understand what it is that he's charged for, what it means, the work that he, that there is work that needs to be done. We noted that before on a prior podcast, like there's clearly some issues there that he needs to work on. Will people give him that grace and understanding of what he was convicted of and what has to happen thereafter? I don't know, especially if Disney does remove him, then there's another headline. Oh, Disney has removed him. Put them on speaker. Who's that? A Charlemagne. Never mind. <laughs> 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 <Don't do that. laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I'm just telling you, we're asking a lot of questions, and it's it's seemingly that um we're not getting as many answers as we like. And I'm and I think really, guys, and just to be honest with you. There's a part of this that's cowardly on my part. I was looking for an easy answer so that I didn't have to make any decisions for myself. And mm-hmm. That's something I normally don't do. Um, in this case, I'll cop to that, that that's something that I was doing uh, here. I wanted someone else to make the decision about this for me. 
Um, and I, I keep telling people, and everyone keeps, it's like, yo, capitalism is like a, like a really, 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 really powerful thing. And I'll tell you why I say that. This will be the last thing I say on this, is that I've tried to articulate it before, but uh, who someone is is oftentimes more valued by the pro productivity that they have. Like your talent is amazing, right? We love talent. Like we mm -hmm. love watching somebody who can sing or dance or do other stuff like that. As human beings, a lot of times things don't have much meaning. And when we see someone who can deliver beauty, it makes us feel like all of the world makes sense, right? When you hear somebody, oh my God, this person is fucking terrible or whatever, but Jesus Christ, they can do something and it touches your soul and it makes you go, oh my God, being alive is worth it. Because sometimes in life, we prioritize beauty over pain. Like what the, the, the high you can feel is prioritized over the low that you can feel sometimes. Sometimes. Now we remember the pain better than we remember the beauty, but we're searching for the beauty so much that sometimes it's difficult to know that, hey, this beauty comes with a lot of stuff on the other side of it. Um, and so when we see someone who's capable of performing the way that Jonathan can perform, we want to not believe that they're capable of other things. Here, it's interesting because I think what, what, what people wanted to not be that type of hypocrite was for someone to say, yeah, he did this. Okay, so he did this, and so now you have to decide whatever. The mixed bag of it makes you go, all right, what level of this are you okay with? Like, what would you want to see happen? Like, if I watched a movie with Jonathan Majors right now, like, would I have a thing in my mind? Like, okay, that's the guy that did this or that's the guy that did that. And honestly, the answer is like, no. Like, I'm not going to look at him as the guy who beat up Grace Jabari. Because that's not what he was charged with. Because, but he kind of was. Well, he was charged with beating her up inside of no, the car. No, he's charged with being reckless or careless. And and I and and the only reason I say that, and I'm not trying to defend it, it's you could excuse it away because from what we saw, what we saw in the video, right? Let's take the driver's testimony that said he didn't attack her. You see him forcefully pushing her back into the car, and then you see him running away an argument could be made that he was reckless in the force that he used. He was careless in the force, in the force that he used. Um, but he also could have been defending himself in a way to get away from her. I'm just like trying to get away. Right, because if he had wanted to, I'm just going to keep it all the way real. If he had wanted to beat the shit out of her right there, he could have. And the jury didn't found him not guilty on that. So you're not being wrong in saying that. So what I'm saying is you can explain to yourself as you're watching it that it was a toxic relationship. It was a volatile situation. He was trying to get away. He used too much force and he was careless in how he used it and he ran away. And that's what he's being charged for. That's what he, I mean, not charged, convict. That's what he was convicted on. So they were fighting and he was used force to get away. That's what he's being convicted of. So I can see how you can reason that or even why you're stuck with or you wanted the easy answer of he intentionally is a bad person who did this or we believe the evidence shows nothing. I, I can see why you would want that. Well, now, um, this basically means that it is now going to be on Jonathan after he is sentenced, of course, to you know, make his case to the public, talk to people. You know, there's just been other stuff that's that's been discussed. And so um, that's going to be a part of of however he gets not his career back on track, but his life back on track because this has been destabilizing, destabilizing to, to him. And, you know, it, it, we all have moments where we need to take stock and look at who we are. And I guess it's one of those for Jonathan Majors, man. And I do want to note that we are speaking in the context more so of this incident. I'm not talking about when I talk about him getting away and stuff, I'm not talking about that there's an issue with the way he was talking to her in those text messages right. or in the audio recording. That's a whole nother issue, which is why when I said abuse, like what abuse are we talking about? Because it can be broad, more broad than that. And there obviously is some work that needs to be done. I just want to be very clear, speaking to the case. All right. All right. Um, from there, we're going to move on to Black Sense and what they mean is happening again. Okay, there's a woman named Trey So, <laughs> 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 who 
who... It never stopped happening. <laughs> we're making famous because she sounds like a Negro. Started an entire conversation. She is from Georgia. And she is an Asian lady. I think she's Thai. Okay, Donnie, do you, do we know uh, she Thai? She says she's from Thailand, so yes. From Thailand. So we're going to take her word for that, Johnny. Jo uh, uh, Donnie, I almost called you Joey there. And she went viral because this clip, she's a very she's a very pretty lady. This clip of her dropped, and this is how she was talking. First of all, what? Yes, I have an accent because I ain't from here. I was born in Thailand, and I grew up in Georgia for a decade. And then I fucking moved to Nebraska. Ain't she over there, by the way. How the hell y'all gonna tell me how I'm supposed to sound like? You, you want me to speak in broken English, bitch, link, bitch, the fuck? Or would you like for me to speak formally to you, sir? Fuck out of here, man. So that was her sounding like a little baby. Like five different people. You don't think so? <laughs> No, there were several she... accents within there. I mean, if you guys ever been down to Georgia, different parts of uh, Georgia, the Atlanta surrounding area, the only thing she was missing was the goddamns. Shout out to the homies from Atlanta who, when you talk to them, man, Van, we come over here from the goddamn situation, the goddamn... Donnie, how many goddamns do you hear from the homies in Atlanta? <laughs> It'll be every other... Uh sense or something like that, but it also depends, because there's also a lot of transplant plants in Atlanta, too, so I, I, there's, like, people who have lived here for a long time and might have picked up things, but uh, they also don't, like, aren't, aren't full-on Atlanta. So, the people that are transplants to Atlanta, they don't say the goddamns. I don't no. hear from them. No, but if you've no. been there for a long enough time, them goddamns be coming out. The goddamns is around. She didn't have any. The second audio dropped of her, this is what she sounded like then. So I picked some words from my previous video. And the first word is axe. I daze, old, verber, scrubbery, screech, scrimp, scared. It's an easy one. Thank, rule, and a bonus round. Earn, 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 earn. Mm hmm. Okay, so she's dragging it. Okay? She's dragging it. So, so what happened, let's just be real. What happened was uh, she went viral because of the of, way of that the she sounds. Of the first video. Because of the first video. And then the second video, she's dragging it now. Like, I talk to Charlemagne all the time, and Charlemagne says shrimp is scrimp, it's screep, it's all of that. He's a real geechy That's nigga. how he talks? Yeah, that's a, that, that dude is from South Carolina. He's a real geechy do from Monk's Corner, South Carolina. You talk to other people, that's how they sound. So she knows that she's, in my opinion, she knows that's how she's supposed to sound. So she's dragging. All right. That's why I said five different places. She sounds like five different accents. People don't say that in Texas, in Louisiana, in Georgia. It's like it's five different accents. Okay. So you, so, you know, people, once she started to go viral, people were looking for more content. Okay. Got a new viral person. What do we got to do? Got to see where they've been. I see where they go. What school did they go to? Who their mom is? Where did they go? So this video popped up, Donnie. So I decided to go on my little run, and this is the beginning. You're probably wondering how I ended up here. Let me tell you something. Chick-fil-A actually ran into me. This is me after finishing my meal and running back. Moral of the story, don't ever go on a run with Trey. Does she sound like... Uh, she does not Tiny sound right like there. one and two. She don't sound like um, one and two. So this this started a kind of a uh, a conversation on the net. All right, let me tell you what the conversation is. There were some people that were like, hey, she can't control how she sounds. She comes from a place in Atlanta. She moved there or around Georgia, and that's how she sounds. And it's more on us because we're fascinated that this Asian lady sounds like us. Like, that's the thing. And then, uh, you know, other people were like, hey, we can't gate gatekeep the way we talk. Um, it's bad. And then the third conversation and the most prevalent one is what do we do about people that are cosplaying parts of black culture for the purpose of clout and getting followers and blowing up? Is this the same conversation that was had about Aquafina? Is yes. this the same conversation that, you know, we have uh, about different people 
who co-opt different aspects of black culture to um, gain attention for themselves. Well, yeah. I mean, when you line up all three, it'd be different if you heard these videos separately. But when you line up all three videos together and you hear the last video, which is the oldest of the videos from my understanding, and doing a, I, I did a deep dive into her. She must have erased a lot of her videos. Like she's changed her, her TikTok names, her social media names. It was hard to find a lot of videos on her where she's talking. So a lot of non-talking videos and maybe for this very reason. When you line up all three videos together, it's very clear that she did not always talk with this accent, mm. or I say accents. So she's doing it. You ask, is it similar to the Aquafina? Absolutely. And it becomes this conversation of cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation. I think in the case of Trey So and Aquafina, it's obviously cultural appropriation because you're doing it for clout. You're using what you think to be something that's a part of another person's culture and you're misusing it for clout, right? That's what Aquafina was doing. She didn't even talk like that anymore. And that's exactly what Trey So was doing. And so if you go back to the gatekeeping, what you were talking about, whether or not you should do it, I think that gatekeeping is necessary in instances like this because I think that when people are talking about gatekeeping and whether or not this should be done in specific to the instances, instances with Treso and Aquafina, I think that gatekeeping is necessary to prevent cultural appropriation. And I think that you have to. If you can appreciate somebody's culture without pretending to be like them. It's a totally different thing. I've said before that I don't mind when other people braid their hair. Would you gatekeep on that? Would you gatekeep? You think that's, do you think we should gatekeeping on hair braiding? Okay, this is what I think. Okay. I, you're going to gatekeep. You're, you're totally gate. Like, you, a couple of things. Number one, I don't know where people grew up. And sometimes people grew up, grow up and they talk like where they grew up. I, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about her. Aquafina is from uh, Flushing, Queens. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. Right, like Paul Wall. Okay, Paul Wall. Perfect example. Paul Wall, perfect example. Other guys that grew up around us that weren't black, Sometimes they talk like this. Okay. Two things I have a problem with in this situation. Number one, there's a lot of cooning going on here. She's a pretty Asian lady. And because she talks like she's black or she uses a black scent, you have to then make her famous in a very specific way. It, what we have to stay away from, to me, is uh, romanticizing non-black people who we think are good at doing black things. What's the deal? Like, why? Why is it so awesome when some little white kid dances like they're Chris Brown? Plenty of little black kids that dance like they're Chris Brown. Why don't we make it sure that they have what they need? Why is it such a big deal that this is the deal? It's unexpected. Oh, cool. There's an oddity. Cool. Move on. Now to, to, to make someone into a cultural phenomenon doesn't make any sense. That's number one. Number two is... Of course, culture should be gatekeeping, gatekept. Of course, culture should be gatekept. Culture, by definition, is gatekeeping. It's a set of things that one group of people do for some reason. Most of the time, when you're building a culture, the reasons why you do things are out of necessity. It's out of necessity to keep family structures together. It's out of necessity to eat in a certain way, to sing in a certain way. Let's just take black culture. Most of the things that we do in black culture, they've come from us, from the cultural ingenuity of people that have made do with less, right? So even if we talk about the food that we eat, there are documentaries, books, all types of reading about this. Why do we eat the food that we eat? Some of it comes down from traditions that were passed on from the land from whence we came, but other parts of it are, hey, this is what we got. We're going to make it into something great. So that's what we do. So for us, our survival mechanism and our mechanism for a, 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 an American life or a, an American identity can't be just done by somebody else for fun. There has to at least be a conversation about why we do it and why you're doing it. And by the way, everyone feels that way everybody feels that way about their culture. If this was a black person 
that had grown up in a primarily Asian place and was speaking with what people would consider to be a heavy Asian influence accent, there would be people that would say, hey, why are you doing that? So it's like, why are you doing that? Like, why? Like, and that's okay. A culture is for a people. It is okay to gatekeep your culture. Not only is it okay to gatekeep your culture, you should gatekeep it. You, I, 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 had, I had somebody say, everybody wants their culture shared. Everyone wants their culture shared. Someone hit me up on Twitter and was like, that's not true. Everybody wants their culture shared. Everybody wants their culture diffused. Here's the thing. When you say share, that denotes agency. Yeah, I can share my culture. I can elect to share it. I can say, hey, come on in here. Try some of the food. I can say, hey, I'll sell this. You can buy it. I can say, hey, all this, I can share my culture. But the question becomes, for Black people, is have we shared our culture or has our culture been taken and sold other places? So that, that's what that's where I think it becomes difficult. I do think that you should use gate, um, gatekeeping to an extent. And this is what I was trying to say earlier. I think gatekeeping is necessary in order to prevent somebody from whitewashing your culture. For example, I've said before that I don't really have a problem with other people wearing braids, but braids is obviously something that is specific to our culture. It meant something historically, the braiding aspect. But then when you have other people wear braids and then it's deemed I think it was Kim Kardashian. It was like, oh, or Bo Derek, or they were wearing braids and they called it, they called it something different. They changed the name of cornrows to something different. I can't remember what the name was it was. That's why it's important to gatekeep because you're you're erasing what it meant to the culture that created it. So I do agree that, that gatekeeping is necessary. You can say the same thing about Native Americans, right? Came in, Native American culture, uh, Europeans came over here, we know the history in that. They put them in school to take away their culture and teach them to be more European, white. But then they took their culture and mocked it and commercially sold it to us um, from their whitewashed version of it, which was incorrect and inappropriate. Mm -hmm. So I do think that it is necessary in order to keep the culture, the culture of what it's meant for. The question I have is, to what extent do we gatekeep? Like, how far do you go? Does it go with everything? You know, are, I see a lot of people wear henna. Mm -hmm. Like, do he apply henna. Are, is that only specific to that culture? People do yoga, practice yoga. Is that specific to that culture where other people shouldn't be doing it? Like, how far do you extend gatekeeping? Like, where's the line? Is it just, it's, is it all or nothing? Or is there somewhere to meet in the middle? Obviously, there's somewhere to meet in the middle, right? So, there are cultural inventions that people have c come up with, right? Um, and then those cultural inventions become worldwide phenomena, right? I ate Chinese food uh, like last week. I don't think that eating Chinese food, shout out to Genghis Cohen. It's Americanized Chinese food, but it's very good. Okay, I don't think that that's necessarily a problem. Cuisine, things like that, right? But there has to be a conversation and there has to be agency. Yoga is brought to America. People are yoga practitioners. The uh, way of life, the health benefits, all of that stuff, and benefit people. They benefit people. It's fine. It's cool. Whatever. As long as we understand where yoga comes from, who invented yoga, and the importance of yoga as a cultural invention of said people. That doesn't happen with Black people. It doesn't happen. Our ingenuity, our cultural ingenuity is not respected. You just said it. It becomes, hey, look at the fact that Kim Kardashian invented wearing Jordans. <laughs> hey, look at the fact that, who, you ever seen anybody do the moonwalk? Justin Timberlake is, is reinventing the moonwalk. Is stuff like that. And it's like they're fucking with us. And we know, by the way, that there are many things that we have done that we just kind of get written out of. So the reality is, if you don't want your gates crashed, you need to keep them. If you don't want your party ransacked and people just come in there and steal all your chips, 
go over to your house and then say it's their party. You need to keep your gates. And I think people get upset and annoyed when black people gatekeep because black people are expected to surrender every aspect of who they are for consumption by the American dominant culture. Which is how we got here. And so We've been doing it since we got here. And because we don't do that sometimes, oh, we can't gatekeep. And then other black people. I want to know why she sound like this. Now, if she grew up and, 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 you know, she got adopted by Xscape or something like that, and she was in Atlanta doing it, it's fine. But I want to know why she sound like this. And by the way, her talking like a black person or speaking in a black sense, is not a reason to make her into a star. I didn't realize she became a star. That's something I want to point out. When you were like, oh, people are saying she's, she's, I thought she went viral for the wrong reason. I did not realize people were fascinated by the fact that she talks like this. To me, it is very obvious that she is not talking how she would normally talk. I didn't even need to see the videos for that. Sorry if I'm assuming. I knew that she was putting on an accent. But to me, I think that this, because I talk about the line, I think this is very simple. Appreciation versus appropriation. It's very simple. Listen to the music, eat the food, but don't try to be that. That's to me, that, that's just, it's that simple. Don't try to be that. Why are you trying to be black or what you think is black? Once you step into that space, know that you're appropriating it. It comes off as if you're mocking us, which is also rooted in history. People speaking, minstrel shows, what they think Black people sound like. Like, there's, it's so deep-rooted. To me, it's very obvious. It's, it's like just not saying the N-word. Hmm. I have no problem with gatekeeping. Okay? Other cultures gatekeep their cultures very directly. And they let you know. Okay? Gatekeeping to me is a sign of cultural power. So if you guys are mad that Van is gatekeeping, fuck you. No, nah, no, nah, fuck you. I fuck with you. But no, I'm going to gatekeep. I'm going to continue to gatekeep. I'm going to gatekeep black culture. Not only so I'm, I'm, I'm going to gatekeep black culture, I'm going to gatekeep, because remember, black culture is both the shared experience of black American culture. I'm not gatekeeping any black culture that exists in the islands or in Africa or anything. Black, black, black American culture is both the shared American culture of 40 million some odd black people that live here, but it's also subsets of it, right? So if I hear bounce music, mm -hmm. I'm from South Louisiana. Mm -hmm. If I hear bounce music in a song, somebody sampled Magnolia Shorty or Big Frida Drake. or Drake, right? You're talking I about Drake. I want people to, not, not just Drake, but Beyonce too, but like, <laughs> it, I want people to know where the fuck that came from. That's our shit. And to be honest with you, even more than being our shit, when you say South Louisiana, it's New Orleans' this shit. Yeah, it is. Because they're, because they're, we listen to Bounce in Baton Rouge, hugely listen to it. But for the most part, that's the music of the city. So I want people to know that that's Bounce music that came from that city that's now being put on because Bounce has to live in order for it to live and thrive in New Orleans. It has to be associated with New Orleans. Yeah. That ratchet shit, that's from Baton but, Rouge. But, but yeah. here's the thing when you're like, you're completely gatekeeping. So you have a problem with white rappers. No. As, as Ex long Explain. I don't have a you problem. You gotta have a problem with Iggy Azalea. Yeah, because that was, that was, she, that was an imposter. I have a problem. See, that's what I'm talking about. See, the Iggy Azalea thing is a thing to where, right, first of all, hip hop, just to be honest with you, hip hop is a black American and Latino creation. Okay? But, there are a lot of people that were invested and involved into the beginnings of hip-hop, right? A lot of people from a lot of diverse backgrounds made contributions to hip-hop early on, okay? That's black culture, that's black music, no doubt. But hip-hop has always been, especially when it started, it started to kind of rise in the early 80s, early to mid-80s. Hip-hop has always been something to where it's been sampled, uh, with other artists have been sampled, other music has been, it's always been something that is that. So I don't have a problem with white rappers. I think hip hop is actually a deeper story. And I would like to shout out right now, both Knife Wonder and Sway, who I've had conversations with about this and who do a great job of, of, of detailing and expressing just how varied all forms of hip hop expression have been for a long time. All right. I don't have a problem with white rappers. What I do have a problem with though, 
is someone who would be white and would be in a black art form and wouldn't pay homage, homage to the fact that it is a black art form. That's it. That's it. It's a black art form. It's black. It's a black art form. You're doing some black shit. You're blacking it up. That's fine. That's cool. It's very, it's not just black. It's very specifically black. Like, it's specifically black. You know? A guitar is a guitar, but the way you play that motherfucker could be either like Muddy Waters or it could be like uh, motherfucking Keith Richards, who even Keith Richards is playing guitar like the black people that inspire him to play guitar. Again, would you gatekeep that? I mean, you gatekeep it to the dude. I don't want people not to be able <laughs> it to just do get, it. My point is it gets, it gets sticky is what I'm saying. Like, it's hard to draw a clear line. That's my point. Um, all right. Uh, Anthony Edwards, are you familiar with him? I know who he is. He's one of the most sensational basketball players on the planet. Hmm. He is. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anything about his professional, Donnie, his professional career. Donnie? Yeah. What's your opinion of AE as a basketball player? I'm not saying he's good. He's good. One to watch. He's I a future not, MVP of the league. I disagree with this. The Minnesota Timberwolves right now are one of the best teams in the league. Maybe the best team in the league. Okay, they made it work. AD, Cat, Mike Conley, Rudy Gobert. They're making it work up there in many, many, many Minnesota. Shout out to Prince. Rest in peace. Uh, he he was going viral this um this weekend. Uh, because texts were released, released, that uh, looked like he was pressuring a woman to have an abortion. Now, we know that these texts are real because Anthony Edwards has responded. I'm going to read some of the texts, okay? Mm -hmm. It's between him and an IG model. Her name is Paige, Paige Jorday. She claimed that he impregnated her. Impregnated is a very funny word. It's very formal for <laughs> the term that means nutting in someone. Okay, but just keep going. It doesn't find, you don't find that funny? Well, I don't normally say that either. Nutting That's not in. how I refer to it either. But think about that, though. Like, they got her pregnant is what I would normally but say. I wouldn't let, say... Let me tell you why that's not good enough, okay? Because got her pregnant isn't... It doesn't really get to where we're going. Because you want a visual. It's not true. No, it absolutely is true. It gets to where you're going. Impregnated means exactly that. Okay. Got her pregnant means exactly that. But you got... I don't need any more. I don't to need, me... You want the physical act. No, to me, when you're talking about this and you're talking about the level of maybe irresponsibility or recklessness, you have to think about the fact that there was a... Most likely. Fan, like people fool. know how babies are made. I know, but... We just talk about like, hey, people had sex and then a baby came from the sex. Like, I get it, but for him to act this way, you have to remember that he took the time to fully nut in this woman. You're a pervert. Okay. <laughs> like, it's just, you're a no, pervert. Do you, you just... understand what I'm saying? No. Uh, I feel like <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's unnecessary. I think sometimes we, we, we make it a little too cute. Like, oh my God, they had sex. But like, there's things that you do during sex that, Stop something like this it's from happening. It's not story time. It's an article. So okay. you don't need to get into every little detail of how it happened. We get the point. She's pregnant. She was. So he, she hits him up with, uh, uh, this is, looks like it's through text here or Instagram DM. I'm not sure. I, no, it's, it's text. text. It's text. And she has a clear blue easy. And the thing about clear blue is it's never easy. That bitch is hard, man. Because some hard decisions have to go to that clear blue situation on both sides normally. And it's like, I have an appointment on the 27th. And he says, hell nah, I can't do this. She goes, so now what? Great response. She goes, so now what? And he goes, get an abortion. She then replies. Uh -uh. He said, get a abortion, get an abortion, laugh out loud. Please, LOL. that's important. But it was, an, it was a lowercase LOL. Okay, but it, that's important. Keep going. So it wasn't like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Get, it was like, get an abortion, LOL. LOL. And then uh, it says, honestly, I had an abortion with my son around two years ago and I regret it every day. Man, you can't force a kid in the world, is what he said. You don't know what it is yet. She goes, that's not the point. I had an abortion two years ago and I regret it. And she goes, being cool to you is just going to get the abortion by myself and you not having to do shit and going about your day. That's being cool to you. Obviously, you've been through this before just by your reaction. 
He says, I will send you money to help you out. I didn't ask for it, but okay. You just don't want a baby? Is that, what you're, is that why you're saying all of this? Because I've been cool with you. I don't want kids. Let's handle this like grownups. Okay, I'm not for, trying to force you to be a dad to a baby you don't want. I just don't like abortions. That doesn't make me wrong. If you really don't want to do this, then I'm fine. I won't. And then cuts Ray and he goes, just take the pills. And she goes, you don't care about nobody but you. You got your money. What's the hold up? Now, this is the, the part where it gets interesting. Apparently, there was a $100,000 sum that was paid from him to her for her to get the abortion. I don't have to go back and forth through all the rest of these messages. He then demands that she sends a video as some sort of proof that she had the abortion. I'm not sure what that the video That she took the pills. She got the pill. And he was like, send the video that you got the pills. That you got the pills. Mm-hmm. Send a video that you got the Or pills. maybe that she took the pills too. And she sends him a, a, a picture of a biracial baby. Mm-hmm. And it says, look how cute though with a broken heart. And he goes, he responds to that, send the video. And she goes, I haven't even taken them or received anything. I think I suppose she's talking about the money. He goes, send the video. She goes, why are you repeating the same shit? This is over the course of like a day. And he goes, the video? And then she goes, I was asleep. Okay. And then he goes, where's the video? So at, at a certain point, he stopped at all, just to be honest with you, uh, dealing with her as, this, as if she's a person. I'm just being with you. He never talked to her like a person. He never dealt with her like she was a person. It's like, do it, do it, do it. He says, so I send you what you asked and then it's fuck me. You're going to ignore me now? And he says, my attorney going to handle it. Blah, 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 blah. So uh, apparently she got the... $100,000, she posted a receipt of a wire transfer from an eleven twenty seven of 100000 bucks, And then he uh, came back and talked about it this morning. He said, I made comments in the heat of the moment that are not me, are not aligned with what I believe and who I want to be as a man. All women should be supported and empowered to make their own decisions about their bodies and what is best for them. I am handling my personal matter privately and will not be commenting on them any further. At this time. Rachel? The thing speaks for itself. Hmm. We already noted that he never talked to her like she was a person. He never talked to her, treated her like she was a human being, somebody that had feelings, somebody that was going through something, and even almost without saying it, blamed her, right? Like, I don't want a baby. You need to fix this and take care of it. As if this did not take two, as if he has no responsibility, and as if this was a transactional situation. Help me understand from a male perspective okay. how this, like, you know how, ba- maybe he needed to hear what you wanted to say, no, how you wanted to describe now. this at the now. beginning. Maybe he needed to hear the when you nut inside of her conversation because it's, I don't understand how if you clearly are saying you don't want a kid, which really means I don't want a kid with you because it's my understanding he either has a kid or a kid on the way with his actual girlfriend. Girlfriend, It should be noted he has a girlfriend. Um, so he does not want a kid with her. If you know you don't want a kid, you know how babies are made. Why are you now blaming her that you participated in an act that contributed to her being pregnant? I do not understand why it's her fault and not yours. Hmm. How would uh, how would you have liked him to have handled it? Let's say first. So let me ask you a question. Pick Let's, up the phone and talk to her. Don't put. Don't do this in writing. Acknowledge the fact that she is pregnant. Well, she texted him. She texted him. So she's. I would have picked up the phone and called. Okay. Then I would have, let me go back to the top. I would have acknowledged the fact, let's just say this all was in text message. I would have acknowledged the fact that, okay, you are pregnant. I don't want that. You sound like you do. Let's talk this out. Obviously, the words that he seemed to form with the help of his team later on should have been communicated to her before. What he said in the end, weeks later of, a woman should be supported and empowered to make their own decisions about their body and what's best for them. That's what he should have said to her at the beginning. I'm telling you that I don't want to be a father to this child. I'm telling you that I don't want a baby. And I was irresponsible in this situation because if I didn't want that, then I should have used protection or not even had a relationship with you because hello, 
Like I just said, he has a girlfriend. And you should have acknowledged her pain when she said, I don't want to. I've done this before. I've lost before. I don't want to put my body through this. You should have talked that through her and said, listen, if you do decide to have this baby, that is your right. That you are, you have the decision over your body. But I'm telling you how I feel as well about the situation. Hmm. What can we do from here? Okay. So there's no way you can look at this and make any excuses about why the way that he he acted, right? Yeah. He treated her really, really shit. Like a piece of shit. He did. He treated her like a piece of shit. He did. He did. I do wonder why she leaked this after she got her $100,000, though. Maybe because people, maybe because she found out, maybe, I don't know if she knew he had a girlfriend. I, like, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Yeah, but It she, almost is but, like... But isn't that, isn't that shitty on her part, though? Of course, but who cares? Right, who cares if she's shitty? Because it's no, all no, on no, him. No, 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 no. I don't care. It doesn't bother me that she leaked that because he treated her like shit, right? So, like, I, I don't know what I would, how vengeful, she's obviously being vengeful, right? Like, she's obviously acting out. Right. But she's angry probably because, one, she wanted this baby. He didn't. He's treating her like she's nothing. She probably sees how he does treat a girlfriend when he has them. And he's paying her off. And who knows how long she had the abortion. She is sitting there and she's like, fuck this shit. Why does she want Why the, am I protecting him? Why does she want the baby? That is a question for her. Right. We're making all types of... But, like, you're assuming she wants the baby because it's by Anthony Edwards? Yes. That's fucked up. <laughs> what? eat you up. <laughs> Why? She's had an abortion. Okay. She doesn't want another abortion. Okay. Why can't it just be that... So you think she trapped him is basically what you're saying. First of all, if she did... She, if she wanted a baby by Anthony, then she would have had the baby. Okay. She got $100,000, which is why she didn't have the baby. She could have had the baby. She could have had child support. Right. She could have had a, she could have had another Anthony, uh, Anthony Edwards Jr. <laughs> this is my like, hooping. <laughs> like, it would have been another light-skinned hooper. This is my problem with all of this. Number one, you shouldn't treat people this way. Anthony Edwards is wrong and he's an asshole for treating her this way. And I don't think that any of the stuff that he said in his response and his apology is real. I will say this, though. No, you treated her like this for days. I know heat of the moment shit. Nah, he treated her like this for days. His, his lawyer was involved in the whole thing. He didn't want to either jeopardize his relationship by having all of this come out because once the baby comes out, or he didn't want a baby with someone that he didn't really have a it's physical. Both. Right. Now, if you're not going to tell me, if I'm just being real, that she didn't want this baby because... Uh, you can't do that. Why? You ever talk to women who've had abortion? Yeah. Like, it becomes... It, it hits people in different ways, right? So the fact that she has expressed, I've done this before. I don't want to do this again. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Before we had this, con at the beginning of this, you were having a conversation, right? Uh -huh. You were having a conversation and you were like, he decided to sleep with her. And I said it takes two. It takes, I said it takes it two. It does take two. The only reason I said he is because he was putting it all on her and wasn't including himself. Okay. So in this situation, well, in this situation, she's had the pain of having an abortion. Right. She's had the uh, crisis of having an abortion and it's very, very very, very debilitating to her. Mm -hmm. Why not ask him to wear a condom? Mm. If, it's a good question. If it's that big of a deal. Because but, what, what's going to happen here in this situation is, is even what we're talking about now, we're talking about the fact now that uh, in this situation, she's been scorned. And so whatever happens now, he deserved it. But let me, let me refute what you just said. Why not? You said, why not wear a condom? She didn't say that she doesn't ever want to have kids. She didn't have a kid before. She probably told herself, if I get in this situation again, I'm not going to have an abortion. Right. She so, didn't say she doesn't want kids. So she's free. She didn't, so that's did she, him who I, said that. So he ought, should have strapped up from the beginning. She never said, I don't ever want to have kids. Okay, well, what would you call it when one person has uh, sex with someone who... What would you... Okay, I'm not saying she trapped him Take your time. I'm not saying she trapped him. What I'm trying to say right here is that if she wants kids and he doesn't... She didn't know that at the time. Well, 
what I'm saying is, if if it's if what happened to her was so traumatic, the prop the question is, why not ask him to wear a condom? Because she's not saying she doesn't want kids. She's just saying, if I'm ever in this situation again, I don't want to have an abortion. Yeah, but does she think that he wants kids with her? You have we okay. We're we're doing a lot of speculating here. I'm not speculating at all. But you have no well, idea. Well, hold on. The speculation. The speculation is. I on, guarantee on both sides. you that they did not have a discussion about wanting kids prior to this, and you have no idea what was said to her in that bedroom or what she said to him. Like we just don't know. Well, like, I mean, people I, I, say some things in the heat of the I moment. Do, I do say this. I do know right now. <laughs> that, I do know right now. Okay, I'll give you an example. Freddie and his and his uh. And his baby's mom, his 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 recent baby's mom, they went back and forth. And in the text messages uh, uh, that that Freddie was when he was going through it, she put out a lot of stuff that made it seem as if he had wanted kids with her, and mm -hmm. then when it actually happened, that he didn't want it. Now that's their business, whatever. That's very specific. Here, I feel like if there'd have ever been a situation to where it was like you told me that we were going to raise a kid and it was going to go on to become the next Steph Curry, Clay Thompson down the line, that that would have been something that would have been no, brought up. No, I'm sure, but I don't think that there was a conversation at all. I don't think they were talking like that. They were fucking. Okay, right. <laughs> like, so being that they were fucking, what would make you think that he would want to have a kid with her? The fact that he didn't put a condom on? That Come on now. But See, I'm just saying, but, 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 the but, fact but, that he doesn't want but to you're doing, I'm telling you right now, you are doing a lot of blaming on her. I'm not blaming her at all. No. I'm asking her to take responsibility she's for not, her part in it. She's not, she is taking responsibility she, for her part uh, in so it. So what, what I'm saying is, she's I'm, not, not gonna, I'm not blaming anyone. What I'm saying is, Anthony, Anthony Edwards, for his part in this, asked what he should have probably asked her, what he wanted to ask her in a very insincere and, and, um, and, uh, insensitive way, right? He asked, what he was going to ask in a very insensitive way, right? Hey, he he treated her, he thingified her, no doubt about it. He, there's no way these text messages could have come out from him and him say what was actually on his mind to where it would have looked okay. Like, pull, put a condom on. It's Why are you acting like it's only his decision about whether or not he wears a condom? Because here's my thing. He There's a video that came out about him about how, like, he got a new contract. And this was after the Zion Williamson situation when he was being exposed. And he was like, I, nobody's going to get this contract. It's reserved for one person. He shows his uh, girlfriend. He's like, nobody's going to get come up on me. If that's how you feel, you can't trust people. If you think people are coming after you for your money, you got to know you can't trust people. If she said, I'm on birth control. If he did pull out and he, it was like, you, if, if that's your concern, then why would you not put a condom on? But do you understand, though, how your, your framing of this makes him look like, pun intended, the big bad wolf and her no, look I'm not, like a babe I, I, in the woods? My question to you when we first started was, talk from a male perspective, I don't understand how professional athletes put themselves in these situations. If you, you constantly talk about you can't trust these women. I'm making women the I bad. I never said that. I'm saying they do. Yeah. I'm making women, like they, it's like they know they're after them for their money, for their fame. You said, how do you know she didn't want a baby by him? Like she wanted... She definitely wanted She baby. specifically wanted a baby by him. Yeah, she says she wanted it. Yeah. My thing is, if you know this and you know people are coming after you for a particular reason, right? Like you're just trying to get off she wants to maybe wants to keep you forever. Why would you not protect yourself? He, he he was stupid. That's why I said it's important earlier. And that's why I said to talk explain about this it. to me. And I'm like, it's because what he did was reckless. He nutted reckless. in her, right? And that's that's important. What I'm saying is, when when I look at this, this is what I look at. This is the wrong part of it. Him saying, "Hey, I don't want to have a kid." There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. Like nothing wrong with that. Like, I don't have, like, him saying, hey, I don't want to have a kid, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with him saying, hey, I don't want to have a kid. Um, to me, I think there's a way that you do that, that, like, sort of accesses her humanity or treats her like a human being more than just, a hey, send the video, hell nah, we can't do this, the whole deal. I think that's fucked up. Yeah. Right? I absolutely think that's fucked up. But what I will say is two things. Number one, if it's so important to people not to have children, not to men, because he didn't jack off on her and have the nuts seep through her skin and get her pregnant. If it's important for people to not have children, like if she doesn't want children, she want to have abortion, say, hey, put a condom on. 
put a condom on. But you're but but there's the there's a huge and difference. So, and here. so he should have put a condom on, and she should have been like, "Hey, I want you to put she a condom." She never on. said she didn't want children. Yeah, but even so, in, he did. And so in that case right there, then there's always going to be an impasse when she gets pregnant. And it doesn't matter. And the only thing you can ask him to do is say it nicely. Yeah. And she wanted, I, I absolutely believe she wanted a child. She knew if she was in the situation again, she didn't want an abortion. And she probably looked at those messages that he sent and was like, what kind of father is this going to be to the child? I'll take the money. She probably did do that. The only problem, this is the only problem I have with the two problems. Um, number one, it's funny. Arandis Bakalika and Kalika said, if she got hundred thousand dollars, then what is she? What is she complaining about? Very interesting. So there's there, there's two things. I don't agree with Kalika on that. Number one, she settled way too low. You can't do a hundred thousand. This is a nigga. This is a four five hundred million dollar nigga. I would have the baby. If you're gonna have, if you're gonna do this, and this is to all the ladies out there that might find yourself in this position, if you're gonna do this, a hundred thousand, that's not gonna work. Have the baby. Like, like either have the baby. either have the baby or do some math. Because you, when I'm talking about do some math, think about what it is. You have the baby, you have a cute, cute little pal, y'all go to Disney World together, the whole nine, you raise the baby, cool. But $100,000 is probably why she feel play. I wouldn't be surprised now if she doesn't get more money now. And she should. She should probably get more money now. She should probably try to get a couple M's out of them in this case. Or say, or else I'm going to do a Maybe whole, that's why she did it. Cause maybe she, it is. Because this is like, she's like, I got more. Maybe so. But what I will say is, I am interested in the fact that we talk so much about um, equality and equity. And then when we get in situations like this, there is not enough discussion no. about how grown women comport themselves in these situations as well. I'm not one for the trope that there are this, this group of women that are running around trying to have babies by athletes, even though we know I'm it's telling true. you it's true. I'm telling you okay, I so, know it's so true. Then, so then, and I worked at Team D for and nine years. And they know it too. That's why I'm like... So it's all, so it's all on them to protect no. themselves and for the woman can then play the victim no, after. But I'm, no, she's not playing the victim in this situation. She... That you're all that you're saying would be true if she didn't specifically if she specifically said told him I don't want children either if we saw that all we can assume from what we have here is that she wanted children he did not by the way he signed a five year contract extension that could reach two hundred and sixty million dollars oh, I would have had coming. the baby he's got more money coming <laughs> I, w- I <laughs> he's got more money coming he's got more he's gonna make more money than that he's got more money coming if he stays healthy. He is going to be uh, one of those ones that makes a shit ton. We're talking five, six hundred million dollars in the NFL in the NBA contract. Like, and if you're, a, if I'm, prof- if I'm somebody with money, period, I'm gonna, if, and I'm a man, I'm assume everybody I'm having sex with wants to have my baby. So you remember, you know, uh, Sophie Drake's baby's mom. Yeah. So we had done a story. Um, we had did a, a a couple of stuff, a couple of things. I remember this when I was at TMZ. Um. When she was pregnant at first, she didn't know who the baby's father was. Oh, I didn't know that. So, or there was, let me not say she didn't know who the baby's father was. Let me be, I have to remember it. There was a couple of different guys that the baby's father could have been. And then I think it was like ASAP a- Rocky. Oh, damn. James Harden. I didn't know they were all famous. Drake. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I, I, I didn't know the story at all. She right. thought it was always so it was Drake. ASAP Rocky, I think it was James Harden and and Drake. And then maybe some, one other person. Uh, and that told me something during that time. Nothing in. Nothing inside. And anytime you take, you guys don't want me to say it harshly, you want to say impregnate, but if you, uh, you nut, okay. Now, everybody's going to love these kids eventually. They, they, it always happens. It always happens. The kid comes out, he looks like you, you got the same jumper or whatever, and you go, oh my God, like everybody, it, 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 well, that doesn't always happen, but some in, in cases like this, sometimes it happens, right? Something you get out there by the time your, your son, your daughter gets it. And now it's like, oh, it's my son and my daughter. It's like, whatever. But, I mean, in this situation, I get that he, he's the asshole. But if we, look at, asshole. We, if we look at it through, he is, he's the asshole. But if we look at it through a, a like a 360 view here, the thing that's wrong about it is him speaking to her the way he did. 
Him yes, not- that's what it is. It's not the fact that they had sex. And she no. got no. It's yes. It's the way he spoke to and her. And it's not the fact that he didn't want to have the, ch- the child. No, I no. But again, if you didn't want it, if you knew you didn't, or you were in a relationship, and you knew you were going to step out, I don't know. To me, it's I just wouldn't trust. I've said this before multiple times. I would not trust. I'm telling you, if I'm, I would trust women that mm-hmm. I was having sex with. I would think that they all wanted to have a baby with me. But does that absolve the women of their motives? No, I it seems think, like you're absolving her. No. I am in this situation. Mm. From what we know, I'm specifically absolving her in this situation. In general, I, I, again, I know these women. What? Uh, the women that do this, I should say, not women in general. What? Uh, what do you give his apology? What do you rate it? There was no apology. It was no, oh. I'm sorry. It was an. It was a message. Yeah. It was an acknowledgement of what he should have done and what he didn't do. But like, Anthony, you know. Come keep, on, it's a, it, it, grow up, man. Or grow you, up and treat people like. And people. let this guys just like protect yourselves, right? Mm-hmm. So you're not in a situation like this, guys. You can't women. trust anybody. Everybody protect themselves. Everyone. You can't trust anybody. Everybody yeah. protect themselves. Men, women, wear condoms. Everyone, Rachel. Women wear condoms. Women make men wear condoms or ask men <laughs> to wear condoms and say, "I'm not having sex with you unless you have unless you have a condom on." But I mean, people sometimes people want to feel the vein. Meanwhile, back in Gaza, three hostages were shot dead after being misidentified by a soldier, says the IDF. There's an investigation into the killing of three hostages held by Hamas. They were held in Gaza. And these captives were shirtless and waving a white flag as Israeli soldiers fired on them. This was uh, admitted by the IDF. This was on Saturday. Um, apparently, these hostages managed to evade their captors in the northern Gaza neighborhood, in the A-North, northern Gaza neighborhood, should I say, and they were mistakenly identified as they exited a building on Friday. They were shot by an Israeli soldier. Um, two were killed immediately. Another was wounded and ran back into the building. The soldiers heard a cry for help in Hebrew. Um, the soldier's uh, battalion commander ordered the firing to stop. The third hostage later died of his wounds. Um, this has led to a conversation about Israel's tactics in Gaza, its strategy in Gaza, and whether or not Israel is prosecuting the way this war in a way that prioritizes um, innocent life, in this case, the innocent life of three Israeli hostages. Uh, there have been action and protests by the families of other hostages that are demanding that the Israeli government make a deal with Hamas to the re- to release the remaining 100 and so hostages that are being held. Um, and the fact that these gentlemen were dressed in civilian clothing and waving a white flag is is pretty concerning to a lot of people. This was big news across, over the weekend. And it should be concerning. I mean, first off, my heart just goes out to these families already to be dealing with the fact that... The families of all the hostages. The families of all the hostages, but I'm going to specifically speak about the three hostages mm-hmm. that were killed. To know that your family member was captured as a hostage, has been living in these conditions, the conditions that you don't know, um for months at this point, and then for them to somehow, whether it was escaped, left behind, because I don't think they're sure, get away, wave a white flag, scream for help in Hebrew, and then they take your your child's life. I can't even imagine what that family's going through. And so my heart goes out to them. And yes, of course, additionally to all the families that either have had family members lose lives or are being held hostage. But it, of course people are upset and they should be because it brings to light the question of what's the goal here? Is the goal really to get back the hostages or is the goal to completely obliterate Gaza and anything that gets in its way? And it seems to be the latter with this. I mean, how do you, what protocols, it says that they ignored protocols. What protocols were in place? Like, to me, this seems very obvious. You see three people um, in civilian clothes. I think a couple of them didn't have 
uh, were shirtless, they're waving a white flag, they're talking to you, even if there's a fear that, hey, this is, you know, Hamas dis- um, disguising themselves as a civilian, the protocol that was supposed to be in place is that you don't shoot first. You detain, you figure it out before just immediately killing on sight. And so, one, I'm actually shocked that the IDF reported this. Um, I mean, I guess they had to because they were mm. Israeli, but I, I, I'm i surprised that they did because there was, um, like Hamas has been reporting that Israeli, there have been other Israelis that have died in the airstrikes in Gaza, but IDF wasn't reporting that. I, It's just, it's, it's infuriating that these people, innocent people, lost their lives in this way when this could have been prevented. And I think that's the question, like I said, that's on everyone's mind. What's the mission here? Well, Israel's mission, they've stated their mission. Their mission yeah, is to destroy still, Hamas. But like, destroy Hamas. Mm-hmm. This, but in what way? In whatever way they have to. So th- that, and so that's and the that's question. And that's what I mean. And so the, the question here is not about whether or not war is justified. I don't think that there are very many people who are going to say after what happened on October 7th that war isn't justified. Right. Um, I watched a 60 Minutes interview with a freed hostage and she was talking and what she said was every moment she was afraid that she would be killed in an airstrike. Mm. Uh, Israel wants to wipe Hamas off the face of the planet. It's their stated goal. The release of the hostages, in my opinion, seems secondary to that. Now, everything that happens as the war is being prosecuted has been explained away by being a part of either the fog of war or the tragedy of war. Mm -hmm. So, hey, a baby got killed. Babies die in war. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was a situation here where a Catholic church was hit. Hey, you know, people die in war. It's a tragedy. But the bigger tragedy is if Israel is unsafe. I think for me, obviously, this is being treated differently now because of uh, the fact that these this is friendly fire and these people were Israeli. But innocent people dying in Gaza is not a headline. It's the irony of this and the haphazard way in which it happened, the undisciplined way in which it happened, speaks to the larger concern of how things are going over there. Dumb bombs being used, bombs with no guided missile systems that are just being dropped, you know. Um, over half of the, the artillery there is, is are, are dumb weapons, people are saying. So it doesn't seem like there's a, um, a scalpel being used to make sure that human life is valued. And whenever that is, people are going to have an issue with it. People have a problem with it because it just seems like we blow up everyone and Mm -hmm. eventually we'll blow up somebody uh, that is uh, an enemy to Israel. Um, And so for me, when I look at the fact that they, that the IDF killed three of its own citizens, the only way that it actually is different in that that's not their stated goal. Their stated goal is to get Hamas and they go, whoever else dies, we don't care. And now you have to kind of turn to your own people, your own country, and make that case. And make that case about whether or not that's okay with them. Is it okay with them that we get all of Hamas and whoever else dies, that's kind of, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Because that means that some of yours are going to die. Obviously, three did. Right. And if it is about releasing the hostages, which the hostages should be released because they didn't have anything to do with, with any of this mm-hmm. stuff, they definitely should be released. Uh, and I, I'm calling on the world community to um, call for the release of the hostages. And if a ceasefire has to happen for the hostages to be released, I think that there are families in Israel and, you know, uh, they're close to those people that would love to see that happen. And there is talks right now going on about... Uh, whether or not there's going to be another either prisoner exchange or the release of hostages and something that happens. But what I will say is this, is that like to anyone that felt differently before Saturday, 
than they do now. I guess the question I would ask is why? Well. I mean, no, 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 no. I, that question is both rhetorical and direct. You're right. The, the question I would ask is why. I mean, the deal was that it was okay for innocent people to die as long as Hamas was taken down. And look, in war, innocent people die. The question has always been, how many and what are you doing to stop that from happening? Is it, what's the number? And there, we, it's not an intellectual exercise, it's a direct one. Mm -hmm. Is it 50,000? Is it 100,000? Yeah. Is it 150,000? Is there no upper limit to the number of people that, innocent people that die in order to erase Hamas from Gaza, right? Um, and the question is, how many of theirs, how many Israelis, like, how do you do this? Like, what do you do? What's the right way to do it? What's the humane way to do it? What's the way to do it that uh, is in lockstep with international law? And as this has been going on, the, the answer to those questions has been, we do it any way that we have to. Yeah. Any way that we feel necessary. We do whatever we have to do. We do whatever we have to do. We do whatever we have to do. And we're not going to stop. And no one is going to tell us to stop. Fine. The question now becomes, three of yours have been lost and probably more once we figure out everything. Is that worth it? Is it worth it to the families of people who have been waiting for people to come back? These people have been freed. They were, they were, they, they have been let go. Those families had one. They had one. The worst portion of their life, and it is, I want to say something real quick about this. There's somebody who can listen to this and come back with a specific set of thoughts in their mind. Their, the thoughts are, this, all of this is Hamas' fault, right? Right. All of this is Hamas' fault. Hamas killed those three um, people by even necessitating because this war. starting October, yes, right, October seventh. Okay, that's both true and false. I'll tell you how. It always starts there. For everyone listening, you are responsible for what you do when you're doing it. Always, always. The United States was hit by one of the most deadly terrorist attacks attacks in history, the most deadly terrorist attack in our history, proportionally um, what happened on October 7th, people will argue was worse than 9-11. And the um, barbarity of it, in many ways, the viciousness of it, was worse. Uh, you know, people burning to death in the, um, the Twin Towers is obviously unthinkable as well, but when you look at some of the acts that were committed, some of the people and the way that they died, hostages taken, all of that stuff, um, I, I'm not one person that goes, hey, what happened wasn't horrific, terrible, uh, all of that stuff, you know. I'm not into calling people animals, but as human beings, we can be barbarian and mm -hmm. we can, you know. Um, but after 9-11, right, how did the United States respond? Well, there was a global war on terror mm -hmm. and that war on terror was um, uh, prosecuted in some ways that changed American life, and in some ways that were antithetical to America's stated moral values. I'm not saying that we ever had these values, but they're stated <laughs> but they're, moral yeah. values. The torture of people was questioned after this. This is all post 9-11, so mm -hmm. just so people know, the torture of people was questioned after this. The legitimacy of droning someone a wedding somewhere halfway across the world where they might be with a bunch of non-combatants. All of that's been questioned. Mm -hmm. The uh, wars in both Afghanistan and Iraq that were a direct result of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. All of that has been talked about in terms of our response to that. Because nothing that happens to you, in my opinion, gives you a blank check to run off and do whatever you feel like you should do with absolutely zero accountability. It just doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. Like, Christopher Dorner was a guy here in Los Angeles who went around killing police officers in a rampage some 10 years ago. And when you read his manifesto, his letter, he talked about the fact that he had experienced racism 
and that, you know, Trayvon Martin got killed and all the things that were happening. And look, as black people, as people that have been under an oppressor's hand, you look at that and you go, oh man, this guy finally snapped and he picked up his gun and he went and did something. The reality is, does that excuse him walking up on somebody yeah. that's sitting in a, in a car somewhere and shooting him in the back of the head for no reason? Of course mm-hmm. it doesn't. There's still a way you have to go about it. And there's still rules that we live by um, under the guise and the goal of being a civilized, moral people. We fail all the time, but that doesn't mean we should ignore when people fail. Mm-hmm. So anyone that's talking about this and discussing this, if you are being a responsible citizen of the global community, you have to talk about how this is being done. You have to. Not just for the outcome that you want here, which is peace in the region, which I feel like this bombing campaign is going to set back, but also as someone who doesn't want to see babies burned up. Right. Anybody's babies. So, look, it, you know, there are people that went, Ha ha, nanny boo boo, you killed three of your people. And they were like, oh my God. But indiscriminate bombing and killing in this particular situation where a scalpel should be used rather than a meat cleaver was eventually going to like end up with these type of outcomes. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting to see how they respond thereafter. I mean, they're already saying that they've sat down with their soldiers and have to warn them again or gone over the protocols with them, but this could very well happen again. Um, we had a little back and forth about something and I want to I want to bring it back up. It was a, an actor that I know named Christian Keys. Let's talk oh. about broad strokes. Oh. Oh. Broad strokes. Okay. So broad strokes here. Broad strokes. Okay. And this actor, Christian Keys, has been in a lot of stuff. I used to see him around town. Very handsome guy. Mm-hmm. Christian Keys is the type of guy you don't want to see your girl be friends with. <laughs> he is. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's like, Christian's a great guy, but Christian's the type of guy that you're like, hey, this is my new friend from work, and you're like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Like, He's that's attractive. Like, like that, that's, a, that, that's a tough one. You know, brother from Detroit that has been working consistently in this town, putting together a career and it's like a hustler, one of those act- If you're in the town, you know people, you see them all the time, they're in different stuff. Christian showed up in The Boys, one of my favorite shows for a long time, but you see mm-hmm. him all the time, mm-hmm. building a great career and just been working for a long time, man. He did something that I thought was really brave. He, um, you see him in all kinds of stuff. He's been in, uh, Saints and Sinners was a show um, that I think was on Bounce TV. Shout out to uh, some of my homeboys from The Wire that were on that, I think. I think Trey Cheney was on that. Um, or maybe I'm wrong. But, oh, no, that wasn't Trey. That was uh, J.D. Williams that was on that. Um, but uh, J.D. Williams is my man, Bodie from The Wire. You know J.D.? You, J.D.? you ever met him before? Bodie. I know. Well, no. But you know I, know who, Bodie. I know Bodie. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so there's been a lot of stuff. If you look it up right now, I'm looking at it right now. It's like Supernatural. Family business, Legends of Tomorrow, 911, The Boys, Young and the Restless, The Rookie, All the Queens, Man, like just an actor. Well, he uh, took to his, uh, his Instagram and in a very raw one hour Instagram live, accused a very powerful Hollywood man who he says is a billionaire of a pattern of sexual assault and harassment that has lasted for a long time. Uh, Over a couple of different incidents, he said that this person tried to take advantage of him. He said one time he was drunk or had been drinking some Hennessy, hen dog and dog, and he was asleep in a room in this person's house because he went to go sleep it off after a party. And he um, was then uh, woken up by this person getting in bed with him and, and trying to crank it off. He says after that, the person apologized. And when they apologized, he went up, um, um, actually, Donnie's got a clip. Donnie, play a little clip for everyone. You got a guy that's a billionaire, and I got three grand in my bank account. Who are you going to believe? Right? I got that three grand. That's 
my son's mom's rent for next month. You know, got to make sure little man's taken care of. That's my rent. And that's a little bit for the gas tank and the rest of it. I can go to the dollar store and get some bread and bologna and hot dogs and mustard. And, and you know, I can get by. Work was slow. And a lot of the work that was coming was, it had penis attached to it. I'm like, fuck that, man. I'm not, that's not what I want. That's not what I'm about to do. I regret not speaking up then, not being brave enough to, and I regret not hurting this person because I'm a, I'm a, I got a big heart. Mother had a big heart. Mother's heart was as big as Flint, Michigan. She was like a little, little, little yellow boy. You finna come and you gonna be a part of my family. And I always try to think about things you know, and not lash out, even though I wanted to, even though I want to. I'm mad at me for not hitting him. I'm mad at me for not speaking up and saying something. Because between that year and now, how many young black actors have fell for that? Um... So he goes on to say that this 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 man who he says is a big deal, huge uh, producer, also a billionaire. Um, we're not going to get into any speculation here, uh, but sexually harassed him for a long time. Mm-hmm. Grabbed his dick, tried to make him strip, tried to buy him a car after he um, asked him to strip as an apology. A lot of different things. And it's gone on for a long, long time. And he is ready to talk about it. Everybody was talking about it all weekend long. Did he say, is it still going on? No. Okay. Uh, I, he, he didn't. As far as I'm concerned, he he didn't say that it was still going on, but what he did say was that the strength of Cassie and other people wow. is what made him come out and decide to tell his story and that this is somebody that everybody reveres. And this is, and that's so important. That's why it is so important. You know, obviously with Cassie coming out, There was a lot of talk and a lot of criticism about how long she waited and then how other people are coming out. But what Christian's doing is exactly why Cassie, one of the reasons she wants to tell her story. It gives people the courage to speak up when they didn't otherwise have it. And particularly for men, because majority of the time we talk about women who are sexually assaulted and harassed, but it goes to men to um, non-binary, like it's it's not specific to just women and we don't talk about that enough. And so I can only imagine even with, you know, Cassie, um, him being encouraged to speak out because of what she said, I can still only imagine how hard it was and how scared he must be because if this, you know, he's saying this, this is a billionaire, this is obviously somebody who's powerful. You just said it's somebody that he said is revered. It's scary for what this means for the rest of his career when he spent so many years building this up. But what Van and I were talking about off mic, and I'll say it again here, I did not, I have not experienced what Cassie or Christian have. So I cannot, I do not know what it is like to go through it. I don't know what it's like to then, you know, muster up the courage to be able to share this with the world and open yourself up for the positive and the negative reactions for the court of public opinion. I have no idea what that is. But it does make me wonder, especially something that he said in the clip that Donnie just played, if you want to call it out and you want to speak to an issue that happens in general, but specifically in Hollywood, and you know you're not alone that it's happened to, what does stop you from calling out the person? Because I, I, I'm just going to be honest of where my mind goes. You, you're doing it for a purpose. You're doing it for yourself. You're doing it for others. If there is this monster running around Hollywood, subjecting people to unwanted advances and harassing them and assaulting them and making them feel co- uncomfortable and pressure and using their power to make people or try to make people do certain things, why would you not call out the person to make so they can't do it anymore? Especially if this is somebody who's been revered and nobody believes or knows that this person 
does something like that. Okay, something just popped up in my mind. Mm-hmm. And it literally just popped up. So if we need to redo this in, in, in a different way, then let me know. He did intimate, I see what you think about this, that he might have signed some sort of NDA. Well, he's talking now. The NDA... I- would, that, would that be, from a legal eagle standpoint, would his talk now be the breaking of an NDA? Well, it depends what the terms of it were, but I would okay. imagine that, of course it said, don't say who, who it is, But I would imagine that you can't even talk about it because I'm sorry, he's giving, we're not going to speculate, he is giving a a lot of clues and particularly the timing based on what has come out, specifically in that clip that you just paid, the timing of what is out there even more so alludes to who it is that he's speaking to. So most NDAs, you can't talk about it at all. Mm. So you can't say nothing. But I don't know the terms. It could have right. been like, just never, you can never mention the name. I have no idea. But I would imagine it was like, you can't discuss it at all. He um, he mentioned that, um, that an NDA doesn't preclude you from sharing information with the police. So you can still do that. Because sexual harassment is a felony. Sexual assault is a felony. Right. Um, you know, it's interesting, man. It's like, Like the video, you watch the video itself, and it's uh, the the like the the effect that this has had mm-hmm. on somebody mm-hmm. is so obvious, you know, mm-hmm. so obvious. Mm-hmm. And to your point, let me tell you what we don't talk about. And I don't want to get into a whole uh, diatribe about this, but there's this thing that exists, particularly in the South, and. Maybe it's some guys are just making stuff up to make themselves seem more um, virile or like they got more chicks or whatever. But you'll talk to somebody like in in and around Louisiana, like you know, people in my crew, different people. And you'll ask them like, you know, when was the first time you started like having sex or whatever, whatever. And they'll be like, I'm not gonna lie, bro. Like nine to ten years old, there used to be this girl that would come over and like watch us. And then I've like, heard this before. And yes. then like I would. Like, that was the first woman to either give me head or the first time I had sex. And you hear that at, like, 14, 15, and you're like, oh, okay, well, damn, like, 9, 10, you was getting it off? Like, yeah, bro. And then you get to one age, one age mm-hmm. and you go, fam, you were molested. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to a side and you're like, I know that, nah, I was molesting. I was getting, I was liking that. I was getting, I was getting head, bro. I was, I was doing this, man. Like I was, I, I was enjoying it, bro. I, she let me do this and she let me do that. She was like one of my mama friends or she was one of my mama friend's daughters that we went to church with, bro. She was like 17, 18, whatever. I'm like, yeah, but you were molested in the traditional definition of molestation in the actual meaning of what it means to be molested, you were molested. Mm -hmm. Nah, man, one of my mama friends taught me how to French kiss or like one of my aunties or something like that. He's come over, you know, whatever, whatever. But yeah, yeah, the story keeps getting more molesty as it goes because I don't know if you know that your masculine energy doesn't free you from being assaulted or molested. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like you were molested. Yeah. And yeah. the trepidation or the hesitation, should I say, in those brothers admitting that, being like, yeah, I was a kid that was probably too young, not probably, definitely too young to be introduced into the sexual world like that. In some cases, prepubescent. In some cases, right on the line. Their unwillingness to admit that is probably why it's so hard for a man in the situation that Christian found himself in to talk about it. It's hard for everyone, Mm -hmm. but there is a specific pain and a specific hurdle that men have to jump over when something like this is going on. Their sexuality is often called into question. Uh, Their masculinity is often called into question. Like, why couldn't you handle something like that? Like, why couldn't you deal with something like that? So watching him 
talk about that. And he also talked about a time that he was sexually assaulted on set by a woman who mm. walked by and patted his dick. Um, it's very difficult. As far yeah. as why, you know, name the person. I don't know. I mean, like, you know, we had this conversation all the time. Like, somebody did something, somebody touched something. Like, what's the right thing to do? Is the right thing to do the right thing for you? Or is the right thing to do the right thing for the town writ large? Because all this did was start speculation about who this might sure. be. And everybody's trying to put the pieces together and stuff. But it's still his story to tell at the end of the day. So do you think that that at some... Obviously, people are paying attention and giving space to what he said. But at the same time, sometimes that speculation, when you say all of that except for the who, overshadows what you're saying. Certainly. Certainly. I, I would love for him to say why he didn't go that far. Maybe it is the you said there's an NDA, so let me stop. That maybe that's maybe that that's. But apparently the why. NDA is not going to stop him. Well, it depends. Oh, from going from, from going to the police. Did with he it. say he is? He said that it just doesn't. He said that the NDA doesn't stop you from going to the police with this, and NDA doesn't stop you from from you know admitting this into evidence and then having people. You know what I'm saying? He said that it doesn't. So, but you know, you know, I, I commend hope, him. I hope this gives him some sort of catharsis. Yeah, like some some peace, some something. I mean, obviously people are going to be talking about it for a while, but I hope he stays away from all of that and just, you know, I hope he's proud of himself for what he did because that took a lot of courage. It's a lot of good. Did I tell you about the time I introduced Kalika to Derek Jeter? Yes, you did. I tell you That's about also it. somebody you said you wouldn't want to be friends with. Did I tell you about it? Did I mention it here on the podcast? No. We went to the Bahamas and we met Derek Jeter, who was just the nicest guy. Derek Jeter was down there with the Player, Players Alliance. Shout out to Brandon Watson. Shout out to Cheats. Shout out to everyone down there that I met during the Players Alliance. Maybe, did he say this on the did podcast? I tell the story? No, this was uh, before we recorded. Okay. So, you know, I meet Derek Jeter. Mm -hmm. Derek Jeter's a super nice guy. Mm hmm. Very, very, he very... He was very nice. Yeah. And I introduced him to Kalika just to see how she was going to react. Okay. And he goes, hi, I'm Derek. And I'm like, come on, man. You know? I love that he did that. I, you know? I'm like, come on, brother. For real? I literally said this to him. I was like, come on, man. No, you know, don't, do, don't do the thing, bro. And he was like, well... And Kalika's like, she jumped in because immediately he's like, he's like, what? She's like, what are you supposed to do? I'm like, it's like, if I was you, Derek, I'd have introduced myself. I put my hand out and go, going, it's your pleasure to meet me. <laughs> and what did I tell you? That's why, and that's why you're. <laughs> what? And Derek was, was, was a nice guy. He introduced himself. He was, he was so humble. He was talking about family man stuff. I'm like, this is fucking Derek Cheater. This is the captain. You know? See, God knew you can't handle all that. Can't know I can't handle all what? Being the Derek Cheater. I couldn't, I couldn't handle that much clock. Yeah. Uh, I it, it I am very like outgoing and stuff and very nice to people and stuff like that. But like, you know, I wonder if a Derek Jeter or a Leonardo DiCaprio or say a Rihanna or a Beyonce like looks in the mirror and goes, I'm fucked. Leonardo DiCaprio. Absolutely. Bitch! You ever wonder that? Like, what, like, you stand in the mirror, like, <laughs> like, imagine that you're, that you're like, I don't know, imagine you're Denzel. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is, this is, you're Denzel, right? Yeah. You're Denzel. And like, you're at your house, you know, the kids have gone, everybody's out of the house and you're looking in the mirror and you're like, You know who's looking back at me? That's that nigga. I really am that nigga. Like, I, I imagine that Denzel, especially circa, like, 2003. Yeah, towards the be like, right when he, well, before then. I mean, he's a, before no, he was the man, like, even, like. He was doing it in the 90s, like, for like, sure. Denzel is, like, he's looking, Mo Better Blues just dropped, and, like, he's yeah. looking at himself play the, the trumpet. He's like, oh, my God, who is that I see in the mirror? Yeah. <laughs> is that that nigga? Yeah. Denzel did for sure. Is that him? Yeah. And I just wonder, like, how people, like, if that happens, like, you look, 
like you gotta know, right? You you gotta know, like if Beyonce Me like too. if Beyonce like walks out of the house and she passes a mirror and she stops, and she goes, "Oh hey, hi, Mrs. Nose Carter. <laughs> you're, you're the black queen of of the universe." <laughs> And then walks out the house. I'm sure it's not quite like that, but I'm sure there's some love degree to it. Did you do that after you won the Oscar? No, I've never had a moment where that's that's appropriate. It's not that way, right? I've, I have thought before, oh, that's pretty cool. But like, <laughs> I, they're only, because here's the thing, there's only like a couple of people that could do this. Let's name them. Or should do this. Should do. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio. There's a lot of people you could name. Nah. People that can have the mirror moment is, is really only a couple. It's Beyonce. It's Rihanna. Okay. Taylor Swift. Maybe not. Maybe not. Taylor Swift just won, like, for she's had a heck of a year. She's doing it. She's definitely doing it this year. No way she's not doing it but this year. But she don't year. have, like, the thing, though. She does to a lot of people, Van. <laughs> you're, speaking, you're speaking for yourself. Yes, she does. She doesn't have... Is this... But is she the... That girl? Yes! We know. that she's not she didn't hit us in that way, but to a lot of people, yeah, the numbers speak for themselves. And if she wasn't feeling herself before the addition of Travis Kelsey, she's definitely walking past okay, the mirror Taylor saying Swift. that. Taylor Swift is amazing, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I can't believe we're, we're no. But, there's there's but, a lot of people. Michael Jordan on your shirt. You don't think Michael Jordan? Oh, by Michael himself? Jordan didn't just do it in the mirror. Michael Jordan did it to other people. <laughs> yeah, there's so many people. That but it's not. But, it. but you yeah. have to understand. Even like a Jordan. Jordan is probably like the only guy, like one of the only guys in the NBA that really could get away with it. Like I wouldn't say that there are other dudes. Like Giannis is not. No, no, no. Right, Giannis you know what I'm saying? Like, but is that Jokic? It's not like you just can do this with your blessing. But you have to be a specific level of that motherfucking nigga to do this. Oh, so you don't think LeBron does it? I don't think it's. I don't think he's worthy of it. I said, do you think he does it? <laughs> I, I think m maybe he does, but he probably shouldn't. I don't know what I don't. You're, you're all over the place with dishing this out. I don't know what what factors you're putting into place, but this is this is your. Because you know what, LeBron is like too upstanding, man. Look, Le LeBron got his own school where he gets. Let me say something. I was going to say something right now. What LeBron James does with the I Promise School is maybe the, one of the best things an athlete has done in the world. LeBron is like a family man and all of this stuff. I'm talking about like, you gotta, it's different, right? I I'm, don't know what you're basing it off of, but really, sure, I'm, talking about I'm just like listening. A, a James Dean, Marlon Brando, Marilyn Monroe. I don't know. What Josephine you're... Baker type of motherfucking energy. I'm talking about a goddamn Billy D. Williams energy. I'm talking about you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm talking about that shit that you bring with you, that shit. So maybe they're too young for it, is well, what you're also well, saying. Maybe, because you're naming legends. Well, I mean, because that's what I'm saying. It's like you, when you, when you, that, I'm talking about Sinatra. You know, I'm talking about, I'm talking about like the coolest of the cool mother. I'm talking about Michael fucking Jackson. I'm talking about that shit. When you bring that shit with you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because a, a lot of people are stars. And that's the thing about Taylor Swift. A lot of people are stars. They're, they're big, huge fucking stars. But they don't have that shit. You know? I don't think Taylor Swift got that shit. That shit is different that you bring. Like, Leonardo DiCaprio got that shit. Denzel Washington got that shit. You know, it's other people that got that shit. Donnie, do you know what I'm trying to say? They I, got that shit. They got I that don't. shit. <laughs> I, I don't. Because I feel like uh, this doesn't necessarily apply to people that are... Uh, in that industry or in the uh, like a, an attention grabbing industry so i feel like honestly anybody has that in them to be able to look at the oh shut the fuck like, up donnie you know, like, it, 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 donnie that, no 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 brad pitt got that shit you know what i'm saying like, i feel like, like brad pitt like it, it, it's like they, you know you get you get it I know what you're saying, but you're just like, I don't know what your basis is because all you keep doing is saying a name and going that shit and it makes it, <laughs> it makes it real to you, right? You want to pick a name? You're like, I think 50 Cent George Clooney got, got that shit. 50 Cent got that shit. That, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, it's, it's, just because you say it like that and hunt your shoulders up for those who aren't watching the video. Ma Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali got, got that, that shit. shit. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, it's, it's like it, it, you know, it's like, it's like you're like, God damn. Like, if you're Muhammad Ali and it's like 1973, it's like 1973. It's 19 fucking 66 before all the shit went down and stuff. You in the fucking mirror, you like, wait, what? You know he did it. Am I Muhammad Ali? You know Muhammad Ali. Like, did how can it be that I'm Muhammad Ali? Like, think about it. Like, how could it be how that we get I'm here? Muhammad Ali? How do we Magic get here? Johnson. Let's, let's... That's that shit. Okay, so let's, let's... Um... But LeBron is not that. But LeBron isn't, you know what I mean? I, that's why I said I think he's doing, le- he's it's doing legends. It's different. Legends. It's different. Le- Show like... me, do, is there not somebody you want to name? LeBron absolutely does this. Nah, bro. It, it, <laughs> no, it, he I, does it. I said he, he does no, it too. No, he, 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 does he, does he, do, he does it. <laughs> he does it. But LeBron... It, 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 look, I put you like this. LeBron is a little bit too wholesome. He's wholesome. And so because he's so wholesome, you can't really be too wholesome and have that shit. You know what I'm saying? That shit is different. You can't really be wholesome. You got to be a little subversive. Le- LeBron is very, he's wholesome with his stuff. Kobe, Co- Kobe, hold on. Kobe had that shit. Yeah, LeBron is a little wholesome. He's There's, very wholesome. It, I, I, you're just trying to make, we... I hear you. Y'all don't fuck with me. <laughs> but you're just all over the place. <laughs> I'm trying to think of one more person. Think of... No, there's uh, so many! Like give, me, you... like, give me an example of somebody. It's, it's guy, you know. Barack. Barack Obama. There you go. Michelle. Mar- Shit, Michelle. Nah. Wow. Nah, she would never do that. She's too selfless. <laughs> no. Like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Michelle is like a... That's a goddess level situation. There is a level. I'm, t- I'm not saying that this is the... This is the level of cool that we're talking about. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying Michelle Obama is like, she's like I don't know. way I, too I, I, much I don't want to play this. anymore because I, I don't know what, what your basis of this is. Derek Jeter, I will say Derek Jeter. Oh, Jeter's that's one how of them we now. started. Derek Jeter. It was Derek Jeter. That's Derek how we Jeter started. Got that okay. Shit. All right. But he act like he don't have that shit. But then he had it. He, but he knows. But he, he knows. Got it. He knows. That's he the knows. thing. Like, Derek, bro, I appreciate meeting you, bro, because you were very humble. I appreciate meeting all the players out there. Once again, Edwin Jackson. Michael Bourne, um, Big West that plays for the for Cincinnati, Eric Davis. It was Eric Davis got that shit. Eric Davis, everyone. I, I appreciate meeting all of you guys. Everybody that came out there. Derek G the Triangle. He ain't got that shit. Derek, you got that shit. You know you got that shit. All right, we gotta go. Um <laughs> Yes, let's go. <laughs> yes, get out of here. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Take the caps off and do not stop learning. I am Van Lathan Jr. I'm Rachel and Lindsay. Bye guys. <laughs>